changes what? Application. application name, then you're in trouble. You have, to, you have to fix that. So you need to standardize on the application name. There are certain things which you don't have flexibility over. The service itself, the payload of the service, the fact that you are calling that service with a certain name, those are fixed. You cannot change that. You can technically build abstractions on top of it, but you don't want to because those are things that, you know, if your application name changes, you have other problems to deal with, right? Why are you changing it? Is the application, the nature of the application changing? In which case, this class is probably not going to work, right? There are a lot of other implications there. So those things cannot be changed. You're kind of but held by that. Yes, you can technically do that. No, not always. There is an imp there is a default cache that it maintains. All right. Uh, let's quickly go over those things. So, what are the things that this model can handle? Right? Is, is this a good model? Right. We looked at client side versus server side. What's the what's the difference? Um, one of the reasons why the annotation is load balanced is that not only is it doing service discovery, it's also doing load balancing, client side load balancing. Since it's all happening on the client, it's doing client side load balancing. Now, what happens if you have multiple services? You have three service ones, all right? So when it says, can you get service one? The discovery server says, I got three. Now the client has to do the load balancing. But again, thanks to the library, that's again hidden from us. Let me actually quickly illustrate that. There is a way you can run a jar file by providing it a different port. Okay, so this is how you do it. When you do a Maven install on one of these Spring Boot projects, you get a jar, right? What are you doing when you run a project in an IDE? When you run a main application in an IDE? You're running a main class, right? This is the way you run, let me actually do this. When you do a java-jar, and you give it a jar name, you're basically running the class with the main method inside it. You guys know this, right? So what I've done here is I've built the movie info service, and I'm doing a java-jar movie info service dot jar. Now what happens when I run this, when I also have that other thing running? It's gonna run at the same port, and it's gonna say port in use, right? the same application.properties file which contains the port name that's affecting the port in which the IDE run takes the port, it's gonna affect this port as well. And now it says, failed to run. But you can pass in configuration arguments for the port, and that's gonna override what's in application.properties. Uh, it's not gonna be, actually this. So what am I doing here? I'm doing a dash D server.port, is A201. This is how you typically do properties in Java. It's not even got to do with Spring, right? When you, when you run a jar, you do dash D, and then you put the property name equals value, and then it sets the property. Spring configuration uses the same property mechanism as Java does. So you can override the port here. And I'm going to override it to, let's say, A206. Now the same microservice is running a different instance on a different port. And guess what happens? There is Eureka client sitting in the class path. It registers with the same Eureka server. Now if I go to the Eureka server here, refresh, you see there are two instances of moving for service. Now what happens when I run the catalog service here? It still works, but guess what's happening? When the client makes a call to the service, give me all the inf instances, it gets two instances. The client is load balancing on the client side. It's picking one, next time it picks something else. I don't know what's the, what service gets picked, it depends. It can probably does a round robin or whatever, but that load balancing is happening on the client side. Is it effective load balancing? Well, no. Because if you have hundreds, you know, microservice calls that are going through, 
all of them are doing client load balancing and they don't know that there are 99 others that are doing the load balancing, there is theoretically a possibility that all 99 of them pick the same thing because it's doing round robin, right? It is possible, but not likely, right? I'm sure there are other uh, algorithms that this thing does so that even that scenario doesn't happen. So it's not 100% foolproof effective load balancing, but it does the best that it can do uh, considering that it's running on the client side, okay? So you get all of that by default just by that one annotation at load balanced, okay? You're basically telling REST template to do all those things, load balancing, client-side service discovery. Everything happens automatically. And from now on, after you've done this, you can effectively just use the service names as URLs. Now this can go into a property file so that in case, like you said, the worst case scenario, we have uh, things, the service name itself changes, you can update the property file and still have it work, all right? Now, what if you want more programmatic control? You have this thing called the discovery client interface. Let me show you what that is. Let's say I'm gonna use a private discovery client. You get that automatically when you get a Eureka client. Guess what? This has a method called get instances. You can pass in a service ID. Let's say I want moving for service. You pass in a service ID. You get instances and you get a list of the service instance. You get the service ID, the host, and the port and all that stuff. Now, how do you create one of these? just to auto wire. There is an instance of discovery client in your class path and Spring manages and you know it creates an instance when the application loads. So now we can do a discovery client. You have an instance of discovery client. You can say discovery client dot get instances, pass in the service name, and then you can loop through. If you want to do some advanced load balancing, you can do that. Or you want to hit certain instances based on certain conditions related to your application logic, you can do that. But I wouldn't recommend this. I would recommend REST template kind of handle it, unless you really know what you're doing. 